Welcome to the diet and exercise flipped learning clip. Today we're going to be learning all about balanced diet and how that affects us. So what we need to look at first of all is what's involved in a balanced diet. So there are several key parts to a balanced diet. There are proteins, carbohydrates, fats, water, fiber and vitamins and minerals. We're going to take each one of those and look at them separately. We're going to look at sources of each of those and exactly why we need them. And all of those are important for you on your exam. So if we first of all look at proteins. So protein, really important. Protein is used to build and repair muscle tissue. Now we find it in lots of different sources. So you can see there that it's found in chicken leg. Okay, we've got pork chops, some sausages, fish. We've also got nuts and pulses. Um, we've also, interestingly, just up here, we've got something called um, tofu. Now that's something that a, a vegetarian may decide that they want to re that use as a meat replacement. And you can also have microprotein. Now lots of people eat that. So you might know it better as something like corn mince. Okay. So going back, and we, if we want, we can go now and look at carbohydrates. So again, you can see that carbohydrates come in lots of different forms. We've got bread, rice, pasta. Here we've just got um, some um, oats, basically. So if you have porridge, that's a really good source of carbohydrates. People tell you to have porridge in the morning because it um, is slow release of energy. And that's exactly what carbohydrates are for. Carbohydrates give you energy. And you can see there as well your potatoes. Okay. So moving on, we've got fats. Now, lots of people don't think you need fat in a balanced diet. In fact, if you were to write a healthy eating plan, then lots of people tend to miss out the fat because they don't think you need it. But actually, you do. Fat is used for insulation and as a store of energy. And you also need it for certain processes that go on in your body, particularly in your brain. So you'll have heard of good fats and bad fats. Okay, so when we've carried out um, little surveys into where you think fats come from, most people think that it comes from things like chocolate, uh, cakes, your biscuits. In fact, give me something that's unhealthy and you think that that's full of fat. Actually, lots of healthy foods contain fats as well. So you can see there an avocado that's been halved. See olives. And there we've got some nuts again. Remember, we've already seen nuts once. Uh, and we've also got some lard and some butter. So in quite a few different things that people aren't expecting to see them in. Not just your chocolate and your crisps. We've also got water. Now, water isn't one that anybody really thinks about, but water is essential to us. Uh, all the chemical reactions that happen in our body take place in a watery environment. So we all know where we get water from as our main source, so our drinks, but it's also found in lots of foods as well. Okay. We're not going to talk too much about those chemical reactions because we will look at those later on. All right. Now, fiber. Fiber is a nutrient that actually isn't as such a nutrient. It's not something that gets absorbed in our body. It's there to help the food move through your digestive system. For want of a better word, it's there to help you poo. It's to help you um, expel your feces. All right, and fiber is found in so many different forms. But lots of people are missing this out. So brown, you've got brown bread there. You've got chickpeas. You've got all your dried fruits. And if you look carefully, you'll see again avocados making an appearance. You've got your potatoes. So quite a few different places where you're going to find fiber. And uh, last but not least, we've got vitamins and minerals. Now, vitamins and minerals are essential for us. You'll know, have heard about you know, having to have vitamin C or calcium, lots of different things. Now, these are just there to help our body work healthily. And again, they're found in things like your fruit and veg. They are found in other um, types of food, but your main sources of your vitamins and minerals are your fruit and veg. And that's one of the main reasons that you're told to have five a day. Okay. So, if we're going to look at a balanced diet, we need to have all of that in there. And uh, you'll all have, uh, especially for this school, I will have um, your eat well plate in the back of your planner. And you'll see that that's all separated out. Um, you need to be looking at those quantities and seeing whether or not you're eating the right quantities. 
uh, but we're not too worried about that. What we are going to look at now is what happens if you don't have that balanced diet. Because not having a balanced diet can lead to problems. So one of the main problems that it leads to is malnutrition. Now this is the one that we all really know, okay? Malnutrition where we've seen somebody that's extremely thin, painfully thin and really ill from it. So what they've got happening or what's going on there basically is they have the number of calories that they're eating is basically less than they are using. So if I want to have a look at this young man here might only be having say about 2000 kilojoules okay but the amount of energy is expelling the amount of energy is using just living breathing walking around doing all of those essential things could be so let's say 8000 all right so you can see already that there are problems there so for this guy he's undernourished well that's not where malnutrition ends malnutrition is about not having the right balance yeah? so you can have malnutrition and be overweight so this lady may well be having let's say 10,000 going in uh, and actually the amount of energy that she's using, she's not, she may be not doing a great deal. She might be lounging around on the sofa all day watching Jeremy Kyle for all I know. So um, she's not using a great deal of energy so she could well be just using let's say 2000 just as an arbitrary figure. Just to get across the point that actually she's using less than she's taking in. So that is another form of malnutrition. She's not getting a balanced diet and that is classed as malnutrition. So, moving on. We also need then to look at metabolism. Now metabolism is an interesting one. It's one that um, lots of you have heard about but don't necessarily understand. So metabolism is kind of about um, the amount of chemical reactions that are happening in your body at any given time. So all the time your body's needing to make energy, that's a chemical reaction, that's respiration that's going on. And there's loads of other stuff going on. So a metabolism is just a measure of how much chemical reactions is happening in your body, just to simplify it. Now, if you've got a high metabolism, usually you expect to be relatively slim. If you've got a low metabolism, then you expect to put on weight really easily. You might not eat a great deal, but you're not going to burn the energy off, for want of a better word, as quickly. So, if that's the case, if we have a look at it, there are several things that are going to affect your metabolism. The first one, let's start a nice and easy one, let's start with exercise. Okay, Exercise can affect our metabolism. The more we exercise the higher our metabolism will be, right? And that's for a couple of reasons. If we exercise less or only a little bit, let's put less, then our metabolism is going to be lower, all right? Now, when we exercise, what we tend to build up is muscle. Now, if we've got um, a high muscle to fat ratio, so let's say uh, muscle stroke fat, ratio. If we've got lots of muscle and only a small amount of fat, your metabolism's high. And the reason for that is it's harder to maintain muscle than it is fat. Fat kind of just sits there. You don't really need to do anything with it. It doesn't take a lot of energy to have lots of fat on your body. But to have muscle there, muscle takes more energy up. So there's more chemical reactions going on while you've got muscle. So if it's higher muscle to fat ratio, then you have got a higher metabolism. If you've got a low muscle to fat ratio, then you've got a low metabolism. Now, it's not just, your muscle to fat ratio isn't just affected by exercise. I know I mentioned exercise there and I said that they were linked, but it's not just about that. And this is where the girls are unfortunate. Now, what happens is that girls generally have a lower muscle to fat ratio. Boys tend to be more muscular and girls don't tend to be as muscular. So your gender affects you. Yeah, so you can be affected by gender. Now obviously 
and this is only um, a general statement you might have some girls that are ultra fit incredibly um, low fat ratio compared to the muscle so high muscle to fat ratio okay some girls will be but a generalization is if you are a boy you will have okay or a male you will have a higher metabolism and the girls or females will have a lower metabolism okay and there's one last thing that affects it one thing that we can't do anything about apart from well, you can't do anything about whether you're a girl or a boy um, it's your genetics okay? so genetics now your genetics will say you either do have a high metabolism or you have a low metabolism you can't change them not yet anyway so if you've got genetics that say that your metabolism's high then fantastic for you um, and if you've got genetics that say that your metabolism is low then it's not so cracking you need to watch what you're eating a little bit more oh one thing that I haven't added on there that I will add is age now when you're younger your metabolism tends to be higher and as you get older your metabolism slows down okay and that's why when you get older you get some people tend to get a little bit rounder in the middle okay so another thing that is affected by our diet is something that we can get which is called deficiency diseases now we're not going to look in great detail at all of these but we are going to look at what happens if we have a high amount of cholesterol now cholesterol is pretty important we need it because we need it to make these things called cell membranes all right so that's looking back at key stage three and see this animal cell here you'll have seen it before and you'll be able to see it if you go on to BBC bite size okay this is a clip uh, um, just taken from there um, and if you look you can see the cell membrane on the outside has does loads and loads of important jobs and you'll find out more about them as you go into B2 and B3 units so we need cholesterol what we don't want is lots of it because what happens is our normal arteries look like this all right, so we've got our normal artery here. Blood flow going through, nothing stopping it, not a problem. With our cholesterol, what happens is you get a build-up of it. And as you can see here, you've only got now a really small opening for that blood flow to go through. So it can cause blockages, and that's really bad. Your blood carries lots of essential items for you, especially for respiration. So you've got your oxygen in there, you've got glucose and things that you need for energy. If you don't get oxygen... And then you really are stuffed at this point but again that's something that we'll look at a little bit later on so cholesterol causes problems because it'll cause blockages in your arteries all right so final part then last bit of the clip so I'm now starting to run out of time so we're going to look at type 2 diabetes all right so there's been a really rapid rise recently in the number of adults that are developing type 2 diabetes and that's due to quite a few factors and these all link in so we've got an increasing level of obesity and remember we talked about that being malnutrition not getting your balance right okay so we've got obesity Uh, got obesity now that's obviously also affected by lack of exercise uh, and other things are um, things like the, an increase in unhealthy diets now that kind of goes hand in hand with all of those I'm sure you'll agree so unhealthy diet right. So these are all causing this increase in type 2 di sorry type 2 diabetes. Now, for those of you that don't know what type 2 diabetes is, um, diabetes, to put it simply, is when um, the insulin in your body isn't working correctly. So you've got this stuff called insulin. Let's just insulin and that's not working properly. What insulin does is it recognizes when your blood levels are too high. Okay, well, you're some, uh, inside your body it recognizes your blood levels are too high. And insulin works to remove 
that blood sugar. Now, if you've got type 2 diabetes, you aren't able to effectively take that sugar out of your blood. Right? And that can lead to all sorts of problems. Really huge problems. Alright? Now, I've run out of time. I hope that you find that clip useful.